Okay, then we have, uh, now I found the screen again, and now we have uh, from Sweden the presentation from Chalmers University of Technology uh, on real-time information as coordination mechanism for operational disruptions in intermodal interland transport. Port. And um, uh, Per Vid is maybe the presenter, is that correct? Yes, correct. Oh, I'm here. Let's see if I can share my digital screen. space is yours. Thank you. I hope you can hear me well and also see my screen now. Yes, loud and clear and you can see your screen. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, I'm presenting now the paper uh, that was presented here with the title Real-Time Information um, Coordination Mechanism for Operational Disruptions in Hinterland Intermodal Transport. And I'm Per Vide and I'm from uh, Schaumers University of technology in Gothenburg, Sweden. Uh, I'm a PhD student and I have worked on this paper together with my supervisors, Professor Don Andersson and Professor Violetta Rosso. So we go. So the background to this is that we see more and more containers are going um, via the ports um, and we are getting larger and larger ships also, which means that uh, the containers comes at once uh, in large batches, so to say, uh, and therefore it's important uh, to have a good flow of the containers outside of the ports, which is the hinterland transport chain that I'm referring to. Uh, and uh, these hinterland transport chains are becoming uh, important not only for the port uh, operations, but also for the supply chain uh, in a whole uh, to be more efficient uh, for the whole supply chain. Usually, uh, or quite often, these uh, hinterland transports are made um, via road transport by trucks. Um, but suggestions in the literature has been to uh, try to uh, add also other more environmental friendly um, modes, so as um, we see here with the rail and um, inland waterways, for example, for the containers to get from the port out to the hinterland. Um, and their destinations. So what we get with these um, hinterland transports um, with more modes is that we have more actors and also um, more operations that need to be done. And that also generates the need for uh, coordination uh, between the actors and between the uh, uh, operations. Uh, and this is then also uh, needing information or uh, at least there need to be an information flow between the uh, operations and actors. We also see that these chains become more sensitive also um, towards uh, operational disruptions as delays and so on, as you have to uh, change between modes, for example. Um, and uh, to manage these operations, we need more information. So in the, the, therefore we want to combine these two aspects in this paper with the need for coordination uh, and then also the management of operational disruptions. So we set out with uh, the purpose to investigate the role of uh, information and that would done to, through a information processing perspective. I will come back to that uh, for operational coordination in supporting operational disruption management in intermodal hinterland transport. So what we did was that we looked at the hinterland um, coordination uh, transport uh, literature. Uh, and um, we can divide these into two parts. So we had the strategic coordination between uh, organizations um, that is then having, for example, contracts and uh, incentive alignments as um, mechanisms in the coordination. Uh, but there are also um, more upcoming, uh, or the recent years upcoming on the operational coordination in hinterland transport uh, with the help of support from, uh, from information. And that is then also including not only contracts, but the planning and physical processes. Uh, but here we are still lacking uh, knowledge on about how to go about uh, the operational coordination. Uh, and therefore we in this um, paper wants to, to borrow uh, theories or uh, knowledge from the general uh, coordination literature and that is made through the organization information processing theory uh, to provide some inputs for the hinterland transport. Uh, and I will just briefly go through this to now, um, the organizational information processing. So it revolves around two, two strategies. You, on one side, you can 
try to reduce your uh, the need for information processing or you try to increase uh, on the other side the capacity for processing information um, and then there are uh, sub mechanisms to do this um, uh, and these are in line or opposite to the, um, the other mechanisms in coordination which is then often referred to as done with, when uncertainty is low when uh, and you do a coordination on the strategic level this is more than adopted to the operational level and when you have high uncertainty for example in this case the, the operational disruptions that we look at so what we did uh, was that we collected data from uh, uh, hinterland transport chain that looks like this uh, where the container flows through a port and then from the port the uh, transport of the containers is made by uh, rail to a drive port uh, where they are uh, unloaded and loaded onto trucks where they are uh, sent out to the shipper and we did nine semi-structured interviews uh, with the six of the involved actors uh, and just to give a brief uh, overview of the coordination of the operations here that we found was of course these in the higher level of the uh, framework that I showed you the rules and plans are of course there we saw the uh, fee for the first in first out concepts uh, for example in the dry port uh, there is also plans in place uh, depending on the time schedules of course of the ship uh, that is arriving to the port but also departing train between the port and the dry port and when we look at this from the, uh, or analyze it from the organizational information processing theory perspective, um, starting with the first um, side of this uh, theory, where when we look at decreased need of information processing, we can see that uh, the, the create of Slack resources or the buffers uh, are quite heavily um, represented in this uh, hinterland transport. So, we see also different types of buffers uh, in the entire hinterland transport. Uh, and uh, the other two mechanisms of environmental management and create self-contained tasks um, are not that uh, evident uh, in, the, uh, in the hinterland transport chain as, as the buffers then. Uh, but I have a focus on, on the buffers uh, to, in this way, decrease the need of uh, information processing. If we, on the other hand, look at the other side of the framework with the increasing the information processing capacity are the two types of information or two mechanisms of IT systems and create lateral relations. We see that IT systems uh, are in place uh, for the coordination that, uh, that is made and this also supports when, uh, when for example, the disruption occurs to get, to get the relevant information. But also, um, where the IT systems uh, do not provide the information, uh, we see that uh, relations are made and created uh, to, to be able to, to make the coordination. Uh, let's see if I can go to the next slide. There we go. So if we look at these, uh, to sum up these two parts here, we see that Slack resources was a quite uh, used one um, strategy for this uh, hinterland transport, but it's also generating um, issues or, or hiding uh, the disruption management issues. So when, when thinking about this one needs to understand that uh, when we have these Slack resources or buffers, uh, we also need to, to try to avoid hiding the disruption management issues. Uh, and there also, there may be then uh, unexplored potential of steering your operations and environment uh, with these two other mechanisms. If we look on the other side of the framework, uh, we see that the IT systems uh, do support the monitoring of the uh, container flow, uh, but lack uh, information to detect disruptions and also need to understand, to, to develop uh, in this, uh, this line. Uh, and there the relations are, are put in place, but then the relations instead, we see that um, there is not clearly defined the decision maker role uh, in the whole uh, hinterland chain. Uh, and these issues with IT systems and, and relations are generating uh, for both of them uh, a need to cover all uh, actors that are involved uh, in a more appropriate way than is done uh, today. So with this, uh, to, to just understand that the buffers that we found here, they decouple the interdependencies that we heard about uh, in the previous presentation also, 
uh, and then also the need for coordination. So uh, they generate less information, which then could be used for operational disruption management. So they limit the disruption management. Um, and also it facilitates the train solutions from the port without explicit coordination mechanisms. So instead they have buffers, but no um, explicit coordination mechanisms uh, on the other uh, mechanisms that we looked at. Uh, and also the buffers limit uh, somewhat the need for digitalization uh, or the development of the digitalization in hinterland transport chain. So the buffers are important, of course, to, we don't say that they're not important, but for, for, for the disruption management to be timely and to, to be relevant for the actors, uh, digitalization can provide new opportunities for detection and prediction of these disruptions, but they are kind of lost now today uh, as the buffers uh, are uh, hiding, uh, we call it uh, the, the operational disruptions and, and therefore these information uh, aspects are not uh, viewed uh, as important as they could be or not explored at least. So to conclude, uh, before we end this uh, from in time, uh, we did an in-depth investigation of an, uh, the operational disruption in the hinterland transport uh, with the transport mode and use of driveport. We've made connections between operational coordination and disruption management uh, through this information processing perspective uh, and saw uh, the issues of the overload to the buffers in this, uh, in this case uh, and what that does with the uh, the, the development of the information uh, technologies that, that are at hand, so to say. Uh, and then for future research, of course, these, um, there can be put cost onto these buffers that are in place today and compare these with the cost of getting the information, but also cost of maybe having some extra disruptions when not having the, uh, the, the, the buffers and then compare which one is actually uh, most suitable for each different uh, context cases. Uh, and then uh, also quantifying this uh, information that the information can provide to the disruption management to, to get these timely, uh, timely and well uh, relevant uh, management of the disruptions and then see how, how that uh, influences the performance of the internet transport system. That would be uh, recommendations for future research. So thank you very much. That was my presentation. Uh, please feel free to ask questions if you have those. Okay, hey, you have any questions? I think we have Putu Donna watching the chat box here for us. <laughs> yes, I took that up. Yes, I am watching it, but not no, no uh, question yet. No question yet. Thank you for an interesting presentation. This is definitely an interesting topic. Uh, very logistics, no doubt about that. It's good for the conference. And um, uh, if there are no more questions, we'll 